Hello, humans. If you're new around here, this is going to be audio only. So far, the only like video-related things I've done have been streams, which isn't really what this content is. I like to make things that are audio only that you can just listen to while doing something else. But I'm not going to drag on with that. I've already done that in previous videos. So just don't expect any video with this. This is just something to listen to. And with that, I'm just going to get right into it. I don't know how long this is going to be. This is a way bigger rabbit hole than I thought it was going to be. And mostly, I was just like looking at this almost like as a joke at first. But then it became like way more serious when I started lo looking over everything. Like, I, I How I do these videos is I have a bunch of notes and I'm just, they're like general notes. It's not like a word for word script or anything because I, I like these to be kind of like free form and kind of offhand sort of thing. But like I need to remember what I'm talking about and where I'm talking about it because I try to keep things like chronological, like time timeline wise and stuff. But yeah, this, this ended up being like way more deep than I thought it was going to be. And especially by the time I got to the end of this, there's so many words that I don't know if I can say on YouTube without getting like restricted. There's... Just simple topics altogether that I'm going to have to find some fun, creative ways to dance around the words I want to use. And I have a feeling, especially since, you know, you don't always know the person on the other end of the videos you're listening to. I have a feeling I'm going to piss someone off with this video entirely. So let me just get this out of the way. Like, I, from everything I've listened to, like, I love the Sex Pistols and Sid is cool and stuff. I mean, as a bass player, maybe... A human being, I think he had a lot of issues, and I already, like, I don't even know if I can say the word Sex Pistols. I want to, I was really considering, because I know some people get it, just saying Six Bullets the whole time. I thought that would be funny, but, okay, so we know, we know what band he's a part of. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to say it too much. Maybe you just say, like, Pistols, but then at that point, I'm like, I don't really want to, like, self-censor. I don't, like, I don't cuss or anything on purpose, because, like, they're, they're, I'm not adding anything to that, but, like, I feel like I also kind of have to say the band name, and I don't want to abbreviate it. Um, but yeah, we know what we're, we know what I'm talking about. I enjoy the material a lot. I like, especially like the the, the really crappy sounding live albums and stuff. Like I am so into that kind of stuff. So don't think I'm attacking your personal ego by claiming that maybe Sid Vicious wasn't that good, but. This, I'm treating this like any other research I'm doing. I felt like I was trying to hunt down like a cryptid, trying to figure out whether or not Sid Vicious could actually play bass. That's another thing I'm going to just get get um, get um ahead of right now. I'm going to be calling like band members just by like whatever quirky little nicknames they were giving themselves. Well, that sounds super disrespectful, but you know what I mean, like stage names and stuff. So I'm going to be calling Johnny Rotten, Johnny Rotten, and Sid Vicious, and Sid Vicious, so on and so forth. So... I don't want to, like, I ramble on a lot, so get used to that. If you don't like that, click off this video. But I'm going to try to be a little better about it because there are so many notes I have to get through, surprisingly. So, the whole point of this video, when I, I was thinking about this last couple days, maybe maybe just last two days, like, I, I always knew of the Sex Pistols, and I've heard songs and stuff. I was well aware of them. And I like punk music, like, a lot. Just But for whatever reason, I just never, like, sat down to actually listen to the full album or listen to the live stuff or whatever. It's just, like, I heard songs and stuff, like Anarchy in the UK and stuff. It's like, yeah, I like this. I just never, like, put two and two together and be like, hey, maybe you would actually just like to listen to this. So, like, last couple of days I've been listening to that. I've been listening to all the live stuff. Because, like, I, I really do like punk music, and, like, especially, it, it, it goes along with, like, black metal stuff, where I really like the really horrible live audio quality that you can get from some of these live albums. I don't know what it is, but I just eat that stuff up. I absolutely love it. So, this, I feel like this is also going to piss people off, because I literally just recently, very recently, started getting super invested in this material. And I'm reading through different forms and stuff, and I'm seeing some of the way ways some people are talking about this stuff i'm like oh man i'm like i'm gonna get ripped apart if this video gets any traction but i'm just like i'm not trying to insult anyone i'm not i'm not insulting your taste i like garbage like straight up i, I like this kind of stuff and i'm not saying all of it's garbage all of it's whatever but yeah don't be offended by this that's not the point of this but the, uh, let me circle back around to what i was saying so essentially what, I, what, what i'm trying to say here is I've heard, like, offhand comments here and there, you know, like, oh, Sid can't play, or Sid can't do this, or Sid was a bad bass player, or they, they like, muted him during shows and stuff, and I'm like, that's funny, but there that, that can't be true. Like, maybe, like, haha, make a joke, you know, like, punk musicians can't play, whatever, but more so, like, I thought that's all it was. Like, oh, 
was making a funny joke about how he can't play or whatever. But then, because I was like, oh, when I listen to stuff, I want to know the history of specific albums and everything that goes into them because that that kind of paints a different picture of the music you're listening to when you know the surrounding factors of creating the album and stuff, especially with some of these bigger albums that are so culturally impactful, like Nevermind the Bollocks. And I'm not going to say the whole, here's the Sex Pistols thing, because I, I feel like you know what I'm talking about when I just say Nevermind the Bollocks. And excuse my pronunciation, I'm very American. So if, if I'm pronouncing, like, any European names incorrectly, I'm very sorry, but uh, I can only do so much. It's straight up. For some of these names, I am, like, going to Google and searching up, how do you pronounce such and such name so I can try to get ahead of myself on here? So I'm not... Like I'm not purposely butchering anything. I'm trying to I'm trying to be consistent and trying to be good here. But, you know, I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes and I'm not trying to offend anyone. But I am going to say what I'm going to say and whether or not you like it is an entirely different story. Uh, at the end of the day, this is all in, in just good fun and just because I've been really enjoying the music so I wanted to look a little into it and do do some research behind it. So it's not out of a place of animosity. It's because I'm very interested in the topic and it was such an influential band and musician and everything like that so it, it's it's out of respect but it's also trying to get to the bottom of such a great mystery if you will so one of the first things i saw that started all this was and i don't mean just hearing like the jokes or whatever over time just i saw something about i believe it was and i don't have a source for this and i don't remember where i read this so I'm straight up too. If I don't have a source for something or if I don't think something's 100% real, I'm going to be upfront about this. So you might get a little annoyed by me saying things, but when I put information out there, I don't want to tell you that I for sure know something. If I don't, this is going to be as factual as I can be. But if something's just conjecture and we don't know for sure, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that for any piece of info that's not 100% certain because I'm not looking to put out wrong information out there and if there's something i like 100 percent did get wrong or if it's just a rumor and i didn't know it was like please let me know that way we can get all the correct info out there that we can so anyways first real thing i heard was apparently sid asking lemmy from motorhead for uh bass playing lessons and i don't know if it was either that yeah he tried once or he didn't try at all and was just like like sid you cannot play bass i could not teach you how to play bass he was that bad that he was just completely unteachable. And I'm like, okay, wait a second. Maybe there's something to this. Because from everything that we've seen, you know, for the most part, like, Lemmy is a very chill dude. And, uh, like, as far as, like, I have a very surface level knowledge of Lemmy. I just, I think he's, like, a really good bass player and stuff. And he's a very respectable musician. It seems like he was pretty open-minded and stuff. Like, like a good dude. It wasn't like, you know... <laughs> A total opposite end of the spectrum just came to my head. But it's not like he's like Philip and Salma where you're like, oh, I don't even know if I can listen to Pantera. You're such a bad dude. But anyways, so was, I, I thought, I was thinking like, that's kind of funny if Lemmy was like, man, I just cannot teach you. I'm like, okay, so something might be going on here. So this, this morning I got all my notes. I've been researching for hours at this point, listening to different things. I've already listened to a bunch of the live material like a lot these last couple of days, but I've re-listen to some of it trying to find specific things and i would love i would absolutely love to actually be able to play like audio snippets for you but my channel's already really small and i'm just gonna get put into oblivion if i get copyright strikes and stuff so i'm not even gonna chance it with that kind of stuff some of the sources that i was listening to i couldn't find through like youtube music and stuff so i, I was listening to random youtube videos that i found and i'm scared to even put like those in my description so you can find exactly what i was looking for it wasn't hard i was literally just googling specific topics and trying to find if these youtube videos were legit by reading through comments and stuff but you know obviously it's just other random channels uploading videos that they may not own the copyright to maybe the videos aren't copyrighted point being i'm taking zero chances i already had to say the band name and i'm already scared of that i'm already scared this video is gonna get banished to the shadow realm so i'm not as much as I want to just be like, here, here's this video I watch, here's this video I watch, here's this video I watch, because none of it's like, oh, record label that owns this property shared this video or something. I'm like, I don't want to chant anything, but what I will tell you, if you're looking for anything specific, I will steer you in the best direction I can, even if it's just like sharing the Google search link or something where I clicked on the video. And again, like if you want to know specifics, I'll, I'll try to... Uh, navigate my way to telling you, but I'm just trying to be extra careful 
co- you know, kind of just cover myself to make sure nothing bad happens to this video or my channel or anything. Because I, I do enjoy what I've been doing, and I don't want this to get, like, copyright strike. It's, and it sucks, because this is such a good time. And it's not like... This is where the copyright strike do- stuff doesn't make sense to me. Because if you think about it from a logical human standpoint, if I'm showing you 10, sne- 10 seconds of fuzzy audio from a live concert... That's not you listening to the song, especially when I put it in the middle of, like, an hour-long video. So I don't know how long this video is going to be, but you know what I'm saying. Like, anybody that's playing random small snippets of stuff, that's not you listening to the music. That's not you getting the same experience of listening to music. If you heard something and you enjoyed it, you're going to be like, all right, where can I listen to that? Like, where can I just listen to the actual song or the actual music, you know? I, I understand if it's people, you know, just uploading full albums and stuff when it's, like, readily available albums, you can just find and buy the cd buy the record or whatever or listen to on spotify any of that kind of stuff then it's kind of like yeah like i get it i i I, unfortunately i understand why they'd have to like strike that kind of stuff down but especially when it's like oh like random 10 second snippet of a song so i can prove like an educational point that's where it gets ridiculous because you're not listening to a video like this to listen to the music and it would add so much to the video so I could be like, okay, so here in this video, there was this snippet of bass playing that was isolated. And I could show you what I think of this or whatever. And you could listen to it yourself or whatever. But unfortunately, I cannot risk that. I'm not going to be doing that. But I'm going to describe what I was hearing and describe what I'm watching and everything like that. So I know it's very unfortunate. But honestly, if you're like me, you listen to a lot of YouTube videos, you watch a lot of YouTube videos, you're kind of expecting this already. You know I'm not going to be playing songs or even snippets of songs. You know I just, I'm going to get in so much trouble if I do that. So I'm not, fortunately, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, so let's 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 get on with this. So obviously, as I was saying, you know, Lemmy was like, yeah, you're unteachable. From, now, like I said, I don't remember the source on that. I don't remember where I read that, but I did read something along those lines. Um, so one of the first musical things, I'm not going to be going through... Uh, Sid Vicious's whole life because that's that's kind of redundant but I am going to go over some of his like adult life where some of his actions might pertain to some of his musicality or his musical ability where you know that stuff may be affecting certain things because like I said I'm like researching this like it's a legit topic because it is kind of a legit topic you know this isn't just a one off like joke video I'm actually kind of serious about this if you've seen I don't know if you like if anybody who's watching this is, like, watching my other stuff. But, like, I do music stuff myself. I, like, I, I record all the instruments myself. I, I mix everything. I write all the lyrics. I, I sing everything, play the bass. Used to play the drums physically, but where I live right now, I can't have a drum set. So, fortunately, like, my newer stuff, it's, like, program drums and stuff. But point is, like, I, I really... And I really care about the the musicality of this kind of stuff. I don't even know if that's a word. And this isn't me trying to be like, oh, I'm so good. I can do all this stuff. Like, no, I'm still, like, definitely, like, amateurish in my opinion. But I, I have a lot of love for this kind of stuff. And I really like to parse certain things and certain people's musical abilities and bands and find isolated tracks of stuff. I'm just, like, really into this kind of stuff. And I really appreciate everything that goes into this kind of stuff. So this is coming from a place of me loving the music and especially, like, I would have to say, like, if I had to pick one, like, bass is my favorite instrument. You know, I play, like, everything. But bass, to me, has always been the most fun. I love bass. I love bass playing. I love bass players. Like, I love finding, like, you know, live shows and stuff that have loud bass in, as compo- or compared to, like, albums where it's a little more natural in the mix. Like, I, I love my bass playing. I love, I love everything about it. So, you know, again, this is coming from a place of love and everything like that. I, I'm getting distracted. I'm going to do that a lot. I'm very sorry about this. Believe it or not, this is still cut up in different sections. I'm still cutting out things that I'm saying. I know it sounds crazy. But anyways, let's. so I'm not going to be going over his whole life, but what's, like, important, important aspects about it, more so in his adult life, that would affect his musicianship. And, yeah, let, that was my whole point. It's like, I'm not, I'm not like, like, trying to talk crap about him it's more so i'm trying to figure out different life patterns or incidents that maybe would affect certain stuff you know what i'm saying so first first thing i got written down here so i'm trying to find like the beginning of musicianship so i could try to figure out you know some actual playing or something so the very first thing i have was with johnny rotten and sid vicious playing cover alice cooper covers like it's not like just in the street and he was apparently playing 
Sid Vicious specifically, tambourine or an acoustic guitar is what I was reading. And so a lot of stuff I get on Wikipedia and then I read the sentences and then I check the sources and then I read the sources to try to figure out certain things. But some stuff, you know, it either contradicts itself or it says or when it's not an like or statement. Like this isn't he played tambourine or acoustic guitar. It's like, which one is it? Is it both? Is it one of them? That's two very different things. And it kind of, a tambourine is a lot different than a guitar. And I would kind of like to know which one it was. But regardless, they were playing Alice Cooper covers. And they were apparently so bad that people would pay them money to stop playing. Apparently. See, that's the thing. This is all, you know, speculation. But apparently they're so bad people pay the money to stop playing. So there's like the first thing. Unfortunately, there's obviously, like, no audio of this, but the fact that, you know, according according to this, they were so bad that, you know, people had to pay them to stop playing. There's no audio of it, like I said, which, that sucks. I understand why there isn't, but that would have been super helpful to hear some beginnings of musicianship from Sid Vicious to see where he was, like, starting out at. But we have no audio of that, but what we can know is based off this rumor or whatever that, you know, people paid the money to stop playing. So that must have been pretty bad. So that, that we'll, we'll put that in our full, first bullet point here. Paid money to stop playing. Probably not good. Now, overall, what I'm trying to look at is, like, his musicianship as, like, a bass player. But, you know, guitar is a similar beast. So I'm, I'm counting that in with there. I don't really... I'm going to be talking a lot about his vocal performances, but that's not that's not going to be a one to one comparison to how well he can play an instrument. Now, there's definitely a lot of over, overlap with understanding music and understanding note structures and song structures when it comes to that. But that's not necessarily always going to correlate to oh, you can sing well so you can play guitar, or you can sing well so you can play bass. But a lot of times, if you can play guitar, you can at least fumble your way through bass playing until you learn the in- intricacies of it. Um, but I'm still going to be talking about his vocals because this is still overall about his musicianship. But I think, like, for the thumbnail and the title, I, it's pretty much going to be, like, could Sid even play bass? Which is the main focus, but, you know, we're, that's it's too broad to say, could Sid Vicious even play music? But it's like, yes, he can, but you need the specifics, and then it just it gets too complicated. I, I, I have to probably try to play the game a little bit in the sense of, like, just putting can Sid play even play bass is a little catchier, a little to the point, and I think it's going to stand out a little more and kind of just play along with the algorithm. Besides, it's too complicated sometimes to put exactly what I want in the title. There are so many times I'm writing down a title for something while uploading my video, and it's like so long that it just gets cut off in any mobile searches and stuff. It's like, I got to find a better way around it, but sometimes it's like, I want all the info up front. I don't, I'm not trying to clickbait anybody. I'm not trying to do any, if, like, obviously, I get no traction, and I, I, I don't care or whatever. Uh, this is, at the end of the day, this is for me. But obviously, yes, I want people to watch this, and I want people to enjoy this. So, you know, this is a good time to say, if you're enjoying this stuff, I hate plugging myself, but, you know, it does take a lot of work to do this and stuff. And if you think other people would enjoy this kind of content, like, I want to get this out here so I can have these discussions with other people. Like, if if this is the type of topic you're interested in, I'm not going to say I'm always going to be covering music stuff because there's a lot of different things I'm interested in. I like the spookier stuff. I like writing music. I like streaming difficult video game dumb challenges and stuff like that. But again, if you if you want like this 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 mix of a bit of everything of my personality and my interest and stuff, and if even if it's just one specific video like this or something like, and if you think other people will like it, like share it to them, tell them about it, like the video. That stuff apparently helps out with the algorithm and stuff. So, just keep that in mind, because, yes, it'd be nice for me if this gets gets more traction. No, I'm not doing it to get traction, but obviously, if you put a lot of work into something creative, you want other people to see it and stuff. Like, like there's, there's no getting around that. Like, you still want other people to see your work. It's, it's like, yeah, 90% of it's, I just want to make this for myself, but especially for more information-style stuff like this, you want other people to hear it. So, anyways, anyways, that's that's enough of that. So, we have no audio of that, but apparently, you know, it was bad. Bad covers. So, that leads me to my next topic here, was this band called Flowers of Romance. And apparently, Johnny Rotten gave him the name idea for it, and he co-founded, Sid Vicious co-founded it as a vocalist and saxophone player. Now, I was like, oh boy, like, here we go. Like, if anything, like, 
I can't play a saxophone. I know I can't. I mean, I've never tried, but judging by how what I've heard and looking at the instrument, that's going to take some talent. That's going to take you know you knowing something. I'm like, yes. I'm like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna listen to some Sid saxophone playing. No, we're not. There's no audio of it. Very unfortunately, I would have loved to hear him trying to play a saxophone. That would have, I honestly feel like that would have cleared a lot of things up. And I'm not saying that's going to translate to playing bass, but if he was playing saxophone and he was playing it like, like somewhat well, then that would give you an idea of where he was in his, I don't know, musical journey, I guess, so to speak. Uh, but unfortunately, there's no audio of that. So not only can we not hear any vocals or anything, we can we can't hear the saxophone playing. That would have been huge for looking into this. But unfortunately, there's nothing I look like. Even you know, Wikipedia already said, "Hey, there's no audio." That's when I'm like, "Come on, there's got to be something somewhere." I scoured the internet for a decent while. I can't find anything. Anything that I found was just like fan stuff or random things with that title in it. With nothing that actually correlates to this Flowers of Romance band, unfortunately. So that was a complete dead end. So we can put that in the bullet point that he played saxophone, apparently, but I haven't, through, like, spoiler alert, through all my research, I didn't hear him play saxophone once on anything. And I've been listening to a lot of random stuff I've been trying to search through. So, unfortunately, that's a dead end. So now we move on to the next thing, this band. And please, YouTube, just give me a break. There's going to be some bad words. But... Uh, vocals for the the band called The Damned. Now, I'm not familiar with this band. I looked at it just for like a second. Um, just for the stuff pertaining to Sid Vicious. So, he was being considered for fur. You can tell how like American I am. I'm not even saying for. I'm saying fur. Anyways, Sid was being considered for the vocalist of this band called The Damned, which it seemed like they were like at least decently big or whatever. Like I said, I didn't do research on them. This video is already going to be long enough and the the damn success isn't super relevant to this story where so he was being considered for the vocalist and he never showed up for the audition though therefore believe it or not there's no audio of this but according to the article that was sourced and I was reading through it there um the guy that ended up being the vocalist was he like he came to the audition early and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this name wrong I actually didn't look up this name but like Vanian, Vanian, something like that. Um, he went to go check out the competition early during the audition. Yeah, but, you know, Sid wasn't even there. Uh, the article does mention that they were looking for a singer who could play bass, though. So, that is interesting. So, maybe he was already known to be able to play bass. Or Sid was just like, yeah, sure, I can do that. And maybe he actually couldn't. But only later did the guy that actually did show up find out that it was Sid Vicious, which I think is kind of a, a funny story. And the more, the, like, the more I was looking into all this, that that early like punk scene was super connected. There's so many like little things where like, oh, this big punk musician was connected to this big punk musician, and it seemed like the beginning circles of it was very like, I maybe not necessarily tight knit, but there's so many like connections here of musicians that end up getting like really big that were all part of either they were in the same band together or they they played shows together or. One of them liked the other, like, musically and stuff like that. It's just, I was kind of surprised how connected some of this stuff was. But anyways, that is, unfortunately, another dead end. So my next thing, and I straight up, I had to look online how to pronounce this band because I don't listen to them myself. I have now throughout my research. But I think, I think according to what I'm reading, and I read some very angry people on some forums getting down on other people for pronunciation, which is really funny to me. I mean, like... No offense, but get over it. Anyways, Susie and the Banshees. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Please, please don't crucify me. Um, so apparently he played drums at their first show. And another interesting tidbit about this is that Robert Smith from The Cure was also involved with this band at one point. And it's amazing that... Now, it, wasn't, it doesn't seem like it was at the same time or anything, but Robert Smith and Sid Vicious were both involved with the same band. That's crazy because Robert Smith definitely isn't like punk. That's that's more like like new wave, like something like Joy Division or something. Where that's definitely a, its own different flavor. But I just find that fascinating that they're both involved in the same band, just at like different times or whatever. But anyways, Sid played drums at their first show, so I'm like, that's I need to look into that. Uh, I'm like, there's no way there's going to be audio of that. However, however, 
I think I think I actually did find audio of this, and this is stuff I wish I could just like share this, and I probably could get away with a little bit, little bit of it, but like, just look it up yourself. I'm not going to chance anything, but I literally just looked up like Sid Vicious, Susie and the Banshees, 1971 or whatever it was, and I found like a video, and I'm reading through the comments, and it seems like it's legit, so I don't want to say 100% this is legit, but I mean like the audio quality is garbage. It seems like it's an old recording. It's not video or anything. It's literally just like an audio recording. But it to me, it kind of seems legit considering it's like 25 minutes long, which I, you know, roughly I feel like that would be a set length. Um, and, you know, quality-wise, it's terrible. But it doesn't sound like somebody made up 25 minutes worth of music and shoved it through some bad filter. So this sounds like a legit recording from back then. And judging by the comments, it seems legit. So I listened through that. Not, like, all of it. I was, like, trying to skip through here and there. But I did listen to, like, a decent chunk of it. Because I don't want to be like, okay, I heard him hit the tom three times. I'm good. I know what I'm looking at. It wasn't like that. Like, I really... I didn't listen to the whole 25 minutes because that I, I was trying to listen to all their stuff at the same time. But I parsed through, like, a couple things. Um, and, yeah, so here's where things start to get kind of interesting. So, obviously, drums don't equate to guitar or bass. However... There's definitely skill involved with drums. I, I play drums myself. I don't think I'm very good or anything, but definitely play them enough to have an understanding of drums. And it, it is difficult, especially if you're normally just like a guitar or bass player or even keyboard for that matter. Like all of a sudden having to use your feet and hit the bass pedal and stuff, especially if you're trying to do anything double bass with it. I'm not saying Sid was, but... And especially drums are difficult in the sense of no, obviously playing in time, that's super important. Like, your song is going to be ruined if your drummer can't play in time. Um, that's super important. Um, and knowing what to play, when to play. Because it's not like you're playing bass or something and you're like, okay, I want to hit this note, then this note, then this note, and this note. And this is my, like, full chord, chord progression or whatever, note-wise. And I'm going to play that four times and then we're going to go to this uh, set of notes or whatever. It's not like that. It's so, like... When do you hit the when do you hit the snare? When do you hit the hi hit? When do you hit the toms? When am I going to be trying to like use a fill? When am I going to be hitting the crash symbol or whatever? Like you got to really start to understand drums to know when you should be doing specific things. So that's kind of what I was looking for here. To I, I had a feeling going in, I'm like it's probably not going to be like crazy or super good or anything, but I wanted to see if it was like stable. If it like okay, yeah, that's when I would have hit the hi-hat there. Okay, that's a good placement for the snare and stuff like that. Yeah, this is based on keeping a line and stuff like that. So that's what I'm kind of listening for, and I'm listening to this. And now, you 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 know, feel free to disagree with me. Go look up this audio yourself. Um, but it sounds okay. And so I don't think it's, like, amazing or anything, especially, like, the time period. There's already drummers that or like... I can't remember his name. I know he had, like, a funny nickname. This was, like, a little later on, but if we're talking even, like, Misfits drumming, like, that stuff was, like, way, way better than what I'm hearing here. Um, but point being, it's, like, so it's not crazy, and I wasn't expecting it to be, but as far as what he was playing and, like, why he was playing it, it made sense. It's, so if this is, like, a real recording, which, like, I'm guessing it is, again, I don't want to, like, say for sure that it is, but it seems real to me. And it's it's good. It's not bad. Like his placements for everything makes sense. Now, I like I said, I didn't listen to the full twenty five minutes, like like back to front or front to back or whatever. Um, but I listened to like okay, I'm going to listen to this part for a minute, and then I'm going to listen to this section for a minute, and this section for a minute. And like he was like it was super simple stuff, but there was like some fills here and there, like very simple ones, like ones that I would do when I started playing and stuff. But it all, like, made sense. It, it was, like, it seemed like it was in time from what I could parse through the bad recording quality. And, like, yeah, I'd put the snare there. I'd put the hi-hat there. Yeah, maybe I'd throw in um, Tom there or something like that. And it was, like, it wasn't bad. Um, so that was actually very interesting. I was not expecting it at all. Like, if, obviously, you probably wouldn't be watching this video if you weren't in this topic. Go look up this video. You'll, you'll, you'll find it. If you really can't, just, like, shoot me a message or something. But uh, I think you'll be able to find it. And you'll see what I mean. It's kind of shocking. It's like, yeah, this isn't, like, terrible. It's it's really surprising. And so the only problem 
is that this does not correlate to guitar or bass playing. I'm not saying it's not good, but it's not what I'm looking for exactly. However, it is important. It is very important because if this is if this is real, then we can at least say that like okay, he could kind of play drums. He kind of knew what was going on there, and that's because we'll get into this later. But obviously, some of the complaints or whatever, some point here is like oh, he couldn't keep in time. And we'll get into that later, but from what this was, it was totally, like, in time. Like, he was definitely, like, as far as an early punk recording goes, like, I'm sure they didn't have, they weren't using a metronome or something. You know, this was the 70s. Uh, and I was saying, saying metronomes didn't exist, but, you know, lots of times, especially bigger bands, stuff, you know, you might wear, like, earbuds or something and have a metronome going or the backing track or something so you can hear time-wise and everything. But, like... So, yeah, no, it's not the tightest thing you're ever going to hear, but for Sid Vicious playing drums, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty decent. It's pretty good. So, we'll put that as a bullet point, because that's super important. So, here's the next very big, very important chapter. We are going to talk about Six Bullets. And by that, I mean Sex Pistols. Um, so, Glenn Matlock, and, you know, I'm sorry if I'm pissing anyone off. I am very new to the lore of Sex Pistols. <laughs> Like I said, I like punk music. I'm the farthest you would call from a punk. I mean, I I have my ideas. I have my social commentary. But I, I don't think I'm a very rebellious spirit or anything. So, you know, just just, just keep it together. It's okay. Um, so he replaced Glenn Matlock. And, you know, excuse my pronunciation. I'm very American. And so this is this is the next important point. Why did he replace Glenn Matlock? So, obviously, this is some surface-level knowledge stuff. I don't know the deep lore. I'm not caught up with all my reading material yet. But it sounds like, you know, there's two sides of this, maybe even three sides. So, Matlock said he quit, that he was getting sick of the bad word, uh, the bull. Um, and then, apparently, though, he wasn't getting along with Johnny Rotten. But then... Their manager, their manager seems like he needs some work. And like I said, this is surface knowledge, but I'm not getting a good picture of their manager, McLaren. Um, again, pronunciation, I don't know. Just get over it at this point. So it seems like McLaren didn't like Matlock. Matlock didn't like Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten might not have liked Matlock because apparently Matlock liked the Beatles. Oh, no. Um, granted, if time period, I don't know. This is just a quick joke, but if Matlock said he liked Sgt. Pepper, I think I would have kicked him out of the band, too. Now, granted, I don't know if that was I don't know, time, time-wise the Beatles albums, but if he said it, yeah, man, you know, I think Sgt. Pepper was their best album, I'd be like, I think you need to find a new band to be in. <laughs> However, um, so, McLaren was like, yeah, Matlock's too safe. He doesn't, he's not, he's not causing chaos. He's, he's not... <laughs> He's not in Strangers of Paradise. He's not trying to kill chaos. He's 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 not reveling in the chaos yet. I need to get back to that game. Um, so it seems like there's so much drama going on with Matlock. But it seems like Matlock could play bass. And I'll get into this later, but later on Matlock did end up like playing with the Sex Pistols again for reunions and stuff after what happened to Sid Vicious, you know, happened. And I'll get to that later. Um, so he wasn't kicked out for anything about his playing. So he was fine there. So that leads me down the path that Sid Vicious was not introduced into the band because of his playing. This wasn't like, man, Matlock's screwing up and stuff and we can't be having this. I mean, this is also a punk band, you know. You got an image to maintain. But it's not like, you know, I think there'd be a little more leeway with that kind of stuff. Like, oh, you missed the note there. Or you played the wrong note here. It's like, if you're in a punk band, you know, whatever. Um, not completely, but, you know, to, to a certain threshold, there's a certain limit on that kind of stuff that's a little bit higher when you're trying to be more punk in, you know, in my opinion. So it wasn't like anything like that. So they, they kicked Matlock out and they're like, all right, Sid Vicious, you know, Sid Vicious is going to be, you know, our dude. And McLaren apparently said, if Johnny was the voice of punk, Sid was the attitude of punk. So what does that tell us? It wasn't his playing ability that got him in the Sex Pistols. It wasn't anything to do with his ability to play bass. It was his his style, his attitude, his his overall just Sid viciousness, you know. So that's going to be our next bullet point: is why was he introduced into the Sex Pistols? Not his playing ability. All right. So that's another thing we can check off the list here. 
Now, obviously, this is where things are going to get real here. So, this is this is my first point. That's not necessarily musical related, but I feel like it's going to have something to do with Sid Vicious's, you know, like life, which is going to affect your abilities and going to affect how much you're going to practice and do stuff like this. So, one of the first things that happened from my understanding of the timeline is they weren't getting played on the radio of this one station or something. And during one of the first gigs, he apparently, and excuse me if my timeline's wrong, if this info's a little muddy, but apparently he cornered a DJ of the BBC in a bar with, and I'm so sorry, YouTube bots and the algorithm, or not algorithm, YouTube, the YouTube gods, the YouTube bots checking my words, because I, I, I don't know how to get around this, but Sid Vicious cornered this poor DJ in a bar with a broken bottle, and that's a little nutso. That's literally what my notes said. I don't know why I wrote that like that. I literally said a little nutso under that little paragraph there, but that is a little nutso, you know? That's a little kooky. So... He cornered the guy, and he's like, why aren't we on the radio? Because uh, apparently it's like a, a station that played like uncharted music and stuff. And I don't mean like they're charting the seven seas to find this music, but it's music that wasn't like popular. And Sid didn't understand why they weren't being played on the radio. Now, my, maybe this is hyperbole, but I don't think it was because they ended up in jail. And I just did a quick check. It wasn't just that he threatened him. I, I don't know why I didn't write this in my notes, but he actually did, like, hit him with it. So, yeah, definitely ended up in jail. And I saw I read something about somebody bringing him some book in jail. But now I can't find where I read that, which is a shame, because I'd love to know what book it was specifically. That could unravel the whole mystery, you know? And, again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but obviously, you know, he wasn't in the right mind. He had a lot of personal issues. This kind of shows he had personal issues, which is going to, in in turn affect your playing ability definitely so the next my next note here we got first gig with the band in april 3rd 1977 the only real note i could get from this and obviously i can't find any footage i can't find a recording or anything but apparently he had according to my sources he had no experience and couldn't play so did they even check whether or not he could play bass is this hyperbole? Are they exaggerating? Or is this for real? Did he really just like get up with the bass and be like, I'm going to hit some notes kind of in time and that's what I'm going to do. I don't know. I wish we could listen to this. I wish we could figure out what's going on here. But according to this first show, you know, he couldn't even play. So now the real probably biggest part of this, maybe not the biggest part of it, because there, there is some, there's some stuff after this too, but Obviously, we gotta we gotta look into the album itself. Never mind the box. So, I when I was reading the credits for this album, I'm like, Sid Vicious is only on two two tracks. He's only credited on two tracks. Like, what's going on here? So, biggest thing. I'm and so Steve Jones, the guitar player, recorded most of the bass on the album. Now, most of it. So here's where things get a little interesting. Here's where I'm getting some conflicted info. So. It sounds like Sid was recording bass for the album. He has partial credits on Bodies and God Save the Queen. But then you read a different article and he only has credits on, like, Bodies. I think that's what it was. He only had credits for one song. But according to different credits, he had credits for both those songs. But even his credits, when you look on, like, the Wikipedia page and you look at the source and stuff, it's partial bass on Bodies and God Save the Queen. Partial. And... That's bad. That's not a good look. And it seems like, at least I think for bodies, that Steve Jones just recorded over what Sid already did. And for the rest of the bass playing on the album, like not talking to songs, except for Anarchy in the UK, Jones just played bass on all of it. Anarchy in the UK was still recorded by Matlock. So that's, that's crazy. It's getting complicated. But this is a big deal. This is like probably the... the um, you know, as you might say, like the smoking gun of the situation. Please, YouTube. I'm, it's 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 an expression. Don't do that to me. Um, he wasn't even like on the album. Like he might be partially on bodies, but then also by that partial credit might just mean he did play on it. But then he was recorded over, and he might be on God Save the Queen. But I I don't know. And so, and the thing the thing is, even with 
even with this knowledge. So let's just say, okay, he might be on bodies, but kind of not really. But then maybe he's on God Save the Queen. The thing is, even if he sucked, you could still probably get a good recording out of this. Because you can mix things, you can chop things up. You can, even in the 70s, you could have made him sound good. Maybe not, like, amazing, but make it workable. And the bass isn't exactly loud in the mix to begin with. You definitely hide some smudginess, you know? So... This, this is a huge this is a huge deal I still can't get over this like I kind of I think in the back of my head like I always like knew about this a little bit but it's crazy when you're really looking at it like Sid to me whenever I think about the sex pistols I, I think Sid vicious that's like the first thing my head goes to and you know some of Johnny Rotten and I man I was looking into him a little bit it sounds like he has some, some not so good opinions. I thought he was supposed to be all rebellious, but it seems like it seems like he kind of just kept the line. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. You know, that's just my opinion. He said some bad things. I can't agree with that. Um, but I, yeah, like Johnny Rotten's even just secondary to me. Even Jones too, like anything like that. Like when I think Sex Pistols, I think of Sid Vicious. And it's funny on their only real album, like the studio album, like he wasn't even really a part of it. Now, I don't know if he was part of writing credits. If he well, okay, we know what credits he's a part of, but more so like, oh, did he figure out, like, this riff for this song or whatever? Um, if I had to take a guess and, you know, pure conjecture, I would say no. You know, if, if they're already recording over him and Jones is recording most of the bass, I know there's something telling me he's also not coming up with bass riffs. However, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he did, but because we're going to get into this in a bit, too. We don't even know what his writing capabilities were musically. But it, it, to me, it is just so crazy that he's kind of not even on the album. Their only album. He's not even really on there. He only gets partial credits. So that's that's not good if we're going into the camp of, oh, maybe Sid was okay. This is this is bad. This is bad. Uh, this is going to be a huge, a huge downturn for his credibility as a bass player. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, that, with that out of the way, we're going to get on to a little bit of shenanigans is literally my next section. There's some, there's some stuff in here that would affect him as a person, which is going to affect him as a bass player. And then we're going to get into some of the last musical stuff I could find. So just hold tight for a second. But this wasn't supposed to be like a Sid Vicious's life story thing, but you you know the angle I'm coming at from here. It's like... How he was personally is going to affect how well he can play during shows and stuff. And the stuff I'm reading, I'm like, this is too crazy for me to like not mention. I have to bring this stuff up because it's happening during a tour. So it's happening when they're trying to play shows and stuff. So most of the stuff I have written down on here, it's literally for like this two-week period. Which, before I get into that, it's a two-week tour. Okay, I want you to think about for a second while you're sitting here. How much do you get up to in two weeks? And, you know... Okay, you're gonna you're gonna get some groceries probably. You're gonna go to work, you know. Maybe get some gas. You, maybe you know, spend a night with friends. Maybe you'll even see a movie, you know. Maybe in two weeks, you know. That's pr pretty lively. That's uh, you're doing some stuff there. So I want you to think about what you do in two weeks, and then I'm gonna tell you what Sid did in two weeks on tour when he was already product kind of restricted time wise. I want you to think about. How cushy and good your life probably is compared to whatever was going on in these two weeks. So, they were doing an American tour for two weeks. Obviously, his... And this is where my notes are so bad. And I don't want I don't want YouTube to get mad at me. Um, I'm a very small, helpless channel. Please, please have mercy on me. Um, so, his illegal substance use... I, can I even say that? I don't know. I'm going to say that if this gets restricted, this gets restricted. His illegal substance use was very bad at this point. We all know it was bad. It was very bad during his American tour. Um, apparently, from what I'm reading, is his manager, McLaren, and, you know, this is this is speculation sources. I actually couldn't find a source for this. I just read this. But apparently, uh, McLaren kept him on roughly a $14, like, American dollar a week allowance you might want to say so he's given 14 us dollars a week and somehow he was still finding money for illegal substances so who knows how he did that that's not good um sid was already mad that nancy his girlfriend couldn't come on this tour so 
Sid was pissed. He was in a bad mood. He was on bad substances. You know, he's having a bad time. So, and, you know, he probably couldn't play base. So, McLaren, their manager, intentionally placed them into bars and stuff and not, like, good clubs to cause chaos is what it sounded like. And yeah, I think this worked. So, wait, I got a couple of dates here. Remember, this is in the two-week period. There's more stuff that probably happened that didn't get reported on and didn't get written down. But the main highlights, if you want to even say that here, is I read this first. So that he, on January 8th in San Antonio, he hit an audience member with in the head with his base. So when I was picturing this, I'm like, oh, like I've accidentally done something like this before where you like actually hit someone the back of the head with the headstock of the base or something like clumsy, you know, it happens. And now I'm thinking, oh, he did this like a little intentionally hit someone with the headstock. I straight up and you can find this and you got, you have to go find this. I found the video of this and I watched it. It's not like I was literally like, like mouth agape shocked here. I was like, Oh my God. I'm like, that's bad. So in the clip, and like I said, please just, just when you don't this video, go find this clip. He, so they play a song or whatever. And he takes his base by, like, the neck, holding it like a bat, like a baseball bat. And he swings the body of the base, you know, by the pickups and everything. He overhead swings that straight onto the guy's head, like, almost as if he had, like, a sledgehammer and he's trying to hit the guy in the head. That's the kind of motion he was using with the base, as if the body was the head of a hammer. And he just swings that thing and hits that guy. That's, like, the first day... If I'm understanding things correctly, or at least one of the first days, full on swinging that thing. He's having a bad time. I don't know how much bass you're playing when you're swinging at the audience members. Now, now I did watch a little bit of it. It's hard to tell how good his playing is. It's it's really hard to tell in some of these videos. So, but you know, we can use this again as personally things aren't going so well. So you're probably not going to be playing super well. So that video was absolutely nuts. So, January 10th, we got like, what, like two days later? I don't even know how to say this, but he, with the use of peripherals, made a fun little message on his torso. I just looked this up online because I really, I really don't think I can say this, but if you can parse what I'm saying, essentially he wrote, he wrote a message on himself in some painful ways saying, Give me a fix. So that's not good. Mentally, that's probably not good. And later he said, like, jokingly, like, oh, you can't self-unalive yourself with that peripheral. Like, doing it that way wouldn't work. So that's not good. That's like definitely, like, I know I'm, like, joking about it, but that's a very serious topic. He was obviously struggling a lot and on a lot of substances and stuff. And I'm not making light of that. I, I'm, I'm not making light of that. Um. I'm using this as a reference of he was in a bad mental state. Like, in all seriousness, like, we can look back on this in whatever way we're at. And I know I'm, like, overall keeping a lighter tone for this video. But sometimes, in these kind of scenarios, like, I could definitely twist this to... And I wouldn't have to twist it, honestly, to make this very dark. And it, it, it is. It is it is serious, especially with the way he was acting and stuff. And I'm not trying to make light of it. It's just, tone-wise, I don't... It's it's not what I'm going for right now. So no, I, I, I'm like I'm not trying to be offensive with this kind of stuff or anything. But it's just you know he wasn't in a good mental state. In all seriousness, he was not in a good mental state at this point. But again, you know that's what he's saying, and he's joking about it. So you know, then apparently, next point here, same show that he was struck in the head with like a can of beer because he said some bad words. I can't repeat these words, but you can find it online. He he called. People, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he was on something or what was going on, but he called he called Texas at the he was there in Texas. He called them a bunch of like cowboy slur words. Um, not not. I'm not. I'm not even. No, we're not even. Get, just look it up. I'm not even getting into that. that that's 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 enough. You get what I'm trying to say. That was, he was a bad boy for that. He should not have been saying that. So January 11th day after he was in there like i want to call it a waiting room but it's called a green room for like bands chilling before or after shows or whatever and he punched a hole in the wall of their green room the next day and then later on the 14th i 
think that was like their last night of playing or whatever. Um, apparently, there was a rumor that Sid didn't even bother plugging in his base that night. However, from what I was reading, and my sources are sketchy on this, just like half the stuff is, apparently that rumor wasn't even true, but if that rumor was making its way around, I could definitely see why that would be contributing to the image of him not being able to play if he wasn't even bothering to plug in his base. However, what does seem to be possible, maybe true, was that during the sound check, he was told to turn on his base, like, you know, like, turn it down so we can't hear you kind of thing is the the vibe I'm getting from what I was reading. And I the thing is, and I don't remember where I was reading this, but I read somewhere else, too, that the sound people would intentionally turn him down because of his poor, like, playing abilities, like, both with the timing and hitting the wrong notes. Granted, I don't have sources for that. It's just you read these things online, and I've read things like that before. And when it comes down to it, some of it's rumor, but... At a certain point, you also have to understand that this stuff tends to come from somewhere. There's always like a little, there's a there's a little bit of truth in all these rumors that come around. I'm not saying every rumor isn't is is based on truth. Like a lot of a lot of its basis, but with specific stuff like this, you know, try to think about what's the most reasonable answer here. There's probably some truth in this kind of stuff, especially if you hear from multiple different people. But oh yeah, they turned on his base. They turned on his base during sound stuff, like. Eventually, you got to think, okay, maybe something's going on there. So, apparently that, that show was kind of the end of the band, from what I'm reading. Now, I'm not trying to get super deep into the lore of Six Bullets here, but apparently that was kind of the end of the band. So, but that's not the end of our research. We got we got more here. I got, I got a little bit more, so I hope you're still hanging on tight. I'd like to know where you're sitting at right now. Like, let, like, let me know. Right now, are you in the camp of... Sid can play bass, or Sid cannot play bass. I would, I, I would, uh, I'd appreciate that. So, we next thing we're going to be talking about here is this mockumentary they were a part of called The Great Rock and Roll Swindle. Now, why this is important is because Sid was on like the soundtrack for the thing, or at least the album with the same name, and he recorded barely, according to sources, barely they were able to get him to record three songs. Like he was obviously. He was pretty out of his mind. He was still abusing illegal substances. And so they were able to get him to record three songs. But it seems like I listened to the one. They're just like cover songs, it seems like. Like the My Way is like a Frank Sinatra cover. And it's just vocals, though. So we can't parse his playing like that. But the vocals, you know, here is where... Because I've heard his vocals on other stuff. We're going to get into that a little bit. But they're like... They're not, like, bad, and especially when you're trying to stylistically go for, like, punk vocals. They're okay, but these are honestly some of the worst of his. And and I don't mean that in, like, a derogatory way, but I, to me, th- th- these are kind of sad because I feel like you can really hear how messed up he was. Because it wasn't just, like, oh, this is, this is punk vocals, this is cool kind of stuff. He's just intentionally being kind of sloppy. It definitely sounds like he's struggling to even do these songs vocally or anything. And I, I could be wrong, but with everything that was going on, maybe I'm just kind of getting that into my head, but, you know, go listen to it yourself. Like, find, like, My Way or whatever, and you'll kind of see what I mean. Like, I, said, I wish I could show snippets of this kind of stuff, but I'm not, I'm not chancing that. Um, but, again, this doesn't tell his playing ability, but it, even though it seems like he's in a bad place, I still think he knows how to sing. Like, even if it's just punk style kind of stuff, where, you know isn't always most on key thing or anything, but he, he, he can do, he can, he can do it. You know, I definitely think he can do that kind of style. So he has some musical chops in that regard. Um, the next thing, uh, in 78. So a little bit, a little bit after now, um, he played with the original sex pistols, bass player, Matlock under the name. And <laughs> this sounds racist. I'm not even going to like, not even gonna lie, this name sounds racist and I don't know how to feel about it, but he played with Matlock under the name Vicious White Kids. Uh, I don't think that would fly now, and I don't know what they meant by it, and I don't know if I want to know what they mean by it. That name does not sound good. I don't, I don't condone that name. I don't know what message it was, but, uh, no. Anyways, he played with Matlock under, (laughs) under Vicious White Kids. Oh my god. But, 
again, they were vocals only. However, these vocals were definitely, like, better than, like, the rock and roll swindle thing, the great rock and roll swindle. I definitely think his vocals were a little better. I heard some, like, live material that I found. Again, you can find this on YouTube and stuff. Um, the vocals are definitely better, and I, I actually kind of was enjoying this. And I, I hope this, I hope the band wasn't bad. I hope he wasn't trying to say bad things. Because musically, it's, it's like, it's pretty cool. I, I, I liked it a lot. If you're not super familiar with it, like, definitely give it a listen. It's cool to... This is a very good opportunity to hear him in, like, one live setting and just kind of hear how he was doing just vocals. And then you can hear Matlock playing bass and stuff. But, again, this isn't bass playing, but as vocals, he was better during these recordings. Because, now, I don't know if there's any, like, studio recordings of this or if it's only live shows, but, like, I was listening to live material. And, you know, yeah, like I said, like, vocally, it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. What's funny about this, though... So, apparently, you know, Sid and Nancy, Nancy was his girlfriend, I'll, I might get into that, I'm still debating, well, you'll find out by the end of the video if I decide to talk about that. I didn't write down too many notes about what happened, but, so, Nancy was part of some of the shows, too, uh, but Matlock kept her mic unplugged, so, I guess they were having a bit of a, a Yoko Ono moment there, and needed to... <laughs> Just make her be a little quiet. God, that sounds like, and I'm not trying to be sexist or anything, but it's just it's just funny. This isn't this isn't a gender thing or anything. It's just funny that you know, like, oh, like Nancy wasn't a good singer, but oh, Sid said you know you, you had to be part of the show. Okay, she could be there, but your mic's gonna be unplugged. It reminds me of some clip I saw. Um, John and Yoko were playing with I forgot who. And, like, Yoko started doing something. I, I wasn't singing, I'll tell you that. And they just, like, cut her mic in the middle of the performance. <laughs> it's so good. But you could see her still trying. I don't know if she, like, understood what was going on. But it gave me those kind of feelings. And, again, I'm not trying to step in anyone's toes. I'm not trying to be offensive. Just from, a, like, a musical history kind of standpoint, this, this stuff is humorous. So... Next thing we got here in 79, I know we're not finding much evidence one way or another, right? Well, actually kind of in one way, like the bad way. But my next big section here is this album, question mark. I think it's an album. It's very hard to understand exactly what this was. But this album thing called Sid Sings. So you might be thinking, okay, this is just vocals. Uh, no. No, actually, that's what I thought at first, too, and I'm like, I'll talk about it for a little bit, but I don't know how important it is, but it is kind of important. So there's, it's like mostly just live material, it seems like, but there's a bunch of different musicians on it. At first, it seemed like there's no credits on this except for like an audio engineer, but Mick Jones from The Clash was on some of this material, which at first was just a rumor, but that turned out to be true. Um, along with some other bigger names. And I think some of the stuff was recorded even during, like, a Sex Bullets show. Um, but I'm a little fuzzy on that. So, and I, I mean Sex Pistols, I'm just joking around. Um, but, so, it's hard to tell. I don't think these recordings are all consistent, all from the same night, or all from whatever. I don't think there's studio recordings of this. However, most of it is just different musicians with sit-on vocals. And this is probably the best of the bunch, in my opinion, vocally. So check out some of the Sid Sing stuff. But specifically, um, on on the song Born to Lose, go look this up. Uh, now, he... I, I don't remember if he was... Man, I literally just listened to this, and I can't remember if he was doing the vocals or not. But you can hear him doing vocals. No, he was not doing vocals on the song. It was all the other songs. Um, but he was playing bass on the song. And it's good. It's good. So there's finally something where it's kind of audible, and you know it's. I'm I'm glad I dug enough to even get this, but it's finally something where you can listen to it, you can hear it, and I'm not saying it's the most clear thing in the world. You kind of have to parse the mix a little bit, but it's not bad. It's not bad, and I'm not saying it's like crazy good or anything like that. But it's like it was respectable, and I think he could. I think he was doing it clearly. I I, I have a feeling that. He really liked to sing, really liked to do vocals, but I don't think he would have even bothered trying to play bass on this stuff if he didn't have some sort of appreciation for the art. Um, and like I said, like, go listen to the song, tell me what you think, but like, maybe it's me being a little too easy on it, but I'm also trying to understand how he was and who he was as a person, 
and the time period and the genre and stuff. And it's like keeping all that in mind, which you kind of do have to do. I think it's like it's pretty good. It's, you know, I enjoyed it. It's not bad. His vocals and some of the stuff is pretty decent. So I, I implore you. I'd love to share some of it, but again, no way. But go look up some of the Sid, Sid Sings material, especially go look up Born to Lose. And get back to me and tell me what you think of it because it's like, it's it's not it's not terrible. So now <laughs> I say that, and then as a last a last ditch effort because you know like I, I I said earlier I I've been listening to a lot of live material before even doing my research and I re-listened to it while doing research and then spe- so okay before I get too ahead of myself the live material most of it you can't really hear the bass on. So I think there might be some truth in that whole turning him down sort of thing. Now, some of it, I feel like, I don't know if it's placebo, but I feel like some of it, you can kind of start hearing what's going on depending on the different night and the different recordings and all this kind of stuff. I feel like some of it, you can hear some of it, and it's like, okay. But I feel like that's placebo. I'm not even I'm not even sure. I, none of it was noticeable enough for me to tell you one way or another. However, however, if you want something a little more concrete... This was like my last ditch effort after all this. I'm like, I gotta find a little more. And I did. And I'm sorry that I did. I looked up, like, okay, I'm like, it's gotta be like an isolated track or something from something. And I found some isolated moments of Sid just playing, <laughs> just playing bass live. The first, I swear, this was like the first video I clicked on. It was called, please go find this. It was like, Sid. Sid Vicious solo live Sex Pistols or something like that. And it was like in the middle of the one song and Johnny Rotten's still kind of like yelling some stuff. And Sid's, <laughs> Sid's playing a solo, quote unquote. Dude sounds like he's tripping over his own feet trying to play bass. It is bad. It is really bad. It like, you listen to it and he's like, he's missing entire notes. And I don't mean like, Oh, he actually went to the fourth fret when he meant the third or something. It's like he like didn't pick it or he wasn't fretting or something. Like or like, you know, muting it with his hands and not fretting hard enough or something. Like like he's playing stuff and missing notes in between that are definitely supposed to be there. It was really bad. And then I found some like compilation of, of random moments where you could just hear his ba- his bass playing. And it's not good. It's not flattering. It's pretty bad. And I don't know what to make of this. I don't know if it's just random moments of him trying to improvise that he just did not know how to do it. And that could be fair. Like, to me, I was kind of, like, shocked to see how some people are with this kind of stuff. But some people have a really hard time improvising material on the spot that's not already, like, something they already went through and wrote. And that's that, that, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And to me, I, like, I when I was younger especially, I didn't understand that that was even a thing because I've always just been kind of good at that kind of stuff. And this isn't me trying to, like you know, toot my own horn, so to speak. It's just, I always thought people were kind of just like that. They could just, like, pick a skill and just riff a little bit or whatever. But, you know, not everybody's like that. Everybody's got their different strengths and stuff like that. And so it could it could be a situation like that where, like, if Sid had the material, he could kind of play it live. And, he, you know, he's just a good enough of a showman that he's worth keeping around. Because realistically, at the end of the day, it's probably what it was. He was just such a good face for punk. And his vocal stuff wasn't bad. And it sounds like he did backup vocals for a lot of things live and stuff. I think. I think. I wouldn't be surprised considering he's like an okay vocalist. Um, but it's probably more so he's just a good showman. He's just a good face of punk. He was reckless. He was violent. He was he was a good punk, if you want to say it in that way. I don't think his life was good. And I don't think his improvising skills were up to snuff. Like I said, you got to find this material. And I'm not trying to dog on him too much because I do... At the end of the day, I think Sid was monumentally, um, what's what, what's the word I'm looking for? He was he was very important. He was inspirational. That's what I'm looking for. Even as just like in the face or attitude of punk at the time, I think he was a he was a very big deal considering how little he was really a part of. He and that definitely says something about him as a person. And it's a shame how he was personally and all his his life choices and stuff, if he would have gotten cleaned up, who knows what he could have done. He probably could have became pretty good, honestly, especially considering the material he was already kind of a part of. I feel like if... And he was he was young. He, he was very young when he passed away. I feel like he had a bright future ahead of him if he would have been able to get cleaned up, and it's very unfortunate. 
musically speaking, he he could have done a lot of cool stuff. I think, and it's it's a, it's a shame what happened. And you know, this isn't important musically. We could always talk about the Nancy stuff and what happened to Nancy, but and maybe maybe I will at some point. But I don't think that's important to this video. And I don't I haven't looked deep enough into it to have an opinion one way or another. So I don't want to say anything either way. Maybe I'll come back because obviously I like. I like kind of true crime stuff. I don't want to take the the person ability out of it though. Like it's still real people we're talking about here, and I know I don't know enough about it right now to make an opinion either way. And it's not important to how well Sid can play bass. Um, and if, if at any point I've, I've come across as insensitive or anything, I swear that's not what it is. I'm yeah, I'm making light of some serious stuff, but it's all just for the tone of conveying this because i don't want to be like a big downer the whole time that's not very interesting to listen to and i'm still conveying the same information while not being a totally depressing about it because because you could i could have definitely conveyed this whole video in a much more negative light as far as what was going on with him because a lot of it it's, he was probably in a in a dark place if he was acting out that bad especially with all his substance abuse issues and stuff um but i also think in conveying it like that way, we're kind of forgetting the good of him and what he has done for punk music and his legacy and his image. We don't necessarily need to remember all the bad. And I'm not saying it's not important. Yes, we should. But that's not all he was. He was definitely, he was more than his his problems. He was, he was a lot more than just his problems. So with some of that serious stuff out of the way, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. And I know that's kind of a, conclusion that you don't want but i'm going to inject my opinion here now obviously this whole video has been kind of opinionated but what do i think could sid play bass um yeah i think he could i think he could when he when he was able to when he was in a right of enough state of mind and when he wasn't just trying to be a good showman if we look at stuff like the born to lose thing he could play bass, you know? And obviously, even if he, like, sucked, if he sucked too bad, I and he was, like, that much of a detriment, I don't see him being part of all the live shows and stuff for the Sex Pistols. I don't see that being the case. I definitely... Th I don't think he's great, and I think because of his issues, he had a lot of problems. And I don't think he can improvise at all if that was the problems going on in those clips I watched. But I think, if, I think when he put his mind to it and he tried, he was... He could be a good musician. I, I do think so. The problem is that's not always what he was doing. But when it comes down to it, I do think Sid can play bass. I mean, I've watched him play bass. It's just it's just not always good. But he had, there's something in there. And if we go back to, oh, he could kind of play drums probably. He apparently maybe played saxophone, but we don't know about that. But the snippets where we do kind of hear him just focusing on just playing it's not terrible. It's not like, oh my god, he's the worst thing ever, you know? So, that's my conclusion. This has gone on long enough. I, like, you know, I'd like to hear what you think about it, obviously. Let, let me know what you guys think about Sid Vicious, his playing. That's what this all comes down to. At the end of the day, this is just kind of, as mean as I have been towards him most of this video, this is just a big love letter to how, at the end of the day, how cool Sid Vicious was, besides his personal problems. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been way more research than I thought it was going to be, but I really enjoyed looking into the history of the band, looking into the history of Sid Vicious, reading about Johnny Rotten and, and Jones and stuff like that. This has been very informative, and I'm very glad I did all this research. I've I've come across, come, come away with a different appreciation than I, I had just a day ago, you know? So, all right. That being said, later.